Garrett here. We are at San Diego Comic Con chatting with the cast of Paper Girls coming to Prime Video, Legendary's very own show. So excited to have you here, ladies. I've got one little challenge for you. Could you describe Paper Girls in three words, the first season? Okay, um, unpredictable, heartfelt, and exciting. Uh -huh. Electrifying, emotional, and thrilling. Okay, back row. Without three words, can you even describe the first season? What can viewers expect? Without three words? Go for it. Hmm. Like longer or shorter? You can say whatever you want. I'd say it's an unforgettable, action-packed sci-fi adventure that's gonna touch your heart. How can I? How can I <laughs> summarize after that? <laughs> um, I nailed it. I'm um, actually want to know from you. Your first day on set. What was it like being on a TV set like this? We weren't allowed to speak to each other before filming, and so we met on set, and it was this sort of just electrifying little thing that we all came together, and we learned how to ride bikes in tandem, and did our stunt coordinating, and we bonded really quickly, and our chemistry, I think, reflects on screen because we became such good friends in such a short span of time. I love that you were saying that you did all these stunts and things like that. What kind of skills did you have to learn on set? I mean, there's obviously bike riding, you had to learn uh, time travel as a skill as well. But what were some of the things you got to learn? Um, one quick thing, uh, would you like to go first, Riley? Uh, you start. Yeah. Okay, um, <laughs> one of the things uh, that I learned was how to skid brake on a bike. My dad taught me how to do that. We bought a beat up, like $40 bike and I practiced on that in my driveway. My dad was teaching me how to do it. I love that. I learned how to fall hard a bunch of times <laughs> and um, how to get pulled out of a car without hurting myself, which is a lot of fun, which is a lot of fun. I love doing that. <laughs> So each of your characters are so different. Uh, based on character alone, who would you want to be best friends with? I think all of them. I think all the girls have qualities that like you would want to be friends with. I think Erin, she's very sweet and she feels like if you if you like protect her and, and you guys come become friends, she'll she'll always be loyal. Um, and so I think Erin. I would say Mac because I feel like Mac and I could get into some trouble together and it'd be fun. I would say every single one of them, uh, each one has a quality. I, I I don't know if Mac, I don't know if Mac would take to me immediately, but I think I think Why? at some point we would get along. <laughs> I don't know if she would tolerate me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh man, Ooh, she she can be she can be a bit grumpy at first, but I think there's more to her than that. So I think we could get her some humor going, that kind of thing. Matt but has her wall up. Yeah, know? she's definitely very guarded. Yeah. yeah. You gotta get to know her a little bit better. I like really? that. Um, who is most like their character? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I was like, yeah. Do you play video games? I do. I, I love I that. Do. Yeah. Uh, I know you recognize my Zelda tattoo. No. I played Killer Instinct in GTA right before we left to get on the plane really? for, to come to this press tour. That's cool. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Orchid's my favorite. Orchid, oh, and, Orchid, Orchid and Maya, Orchid, Orchid and Maya are my favorite in Killer Instinct. <laughs> the fact that I know exactly what yeah, you're talking GTA. about there at the right place. I love yeah. GTA. Uh, last question though: What can viewers expect from this show? Because I feel like you have to expect the unexpected. Oh, for which sure. Which is what I thought going into it was very, very different at around the 10-minute mark. So, what can people expect? Well, I think the really cool part about our show is that it is about female friendship and empowerment, and it's really cool that we're looking at the story through a new perspective, young women's perspective. Um, but really, the show is for everyone. You know, you'll you'll laugh, you'll cry, you go ah, you go ah. Um, but yeah, everyone. I think you should act. That was really good. Really, yeah. you know, I that's the first time anyone has ever told me that. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, the show, as Riley was saying, you can you, you can you can find a whole mess of things on the show, but um, each of the girls have a quality that anyone can identify with, and so um, I really expect that people will find a piece of themselves while watching because there's just so much to explore, and each of the girls have a struggle that um, a lot of people can be going through, and hopefully we can all help them get through it, and then they can laugh and cry and ah, ah. All, all while doing it. <laughs> I think they can expect to be very like emotionally invested in it because they will form a bond with all of the characters and I think like you said they can expect the unexpected because they won't know what's coming next and I think that's the best thing about the show.
along with the messages, along with all of the topics it touches on. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to piggyback on what all these guys were saying. I would say the show, like they were saying, there's something in it for everyone. If you like sci-fi, we have amazing special effects. If you like coming-of-age stories, you're going to fall in love with them. And if you like timey-wimey stuff, the show has it. There's, there's stuff for everyone. I like that. Usually they say don't mess around with time travel, but you get to go into different dimensions, uh, not dimensions, but timelines and decades. If you got to time travel, where would you want to go in the whole spectrum of life? And I understand that asking women this question kind of sucks because we can't really go back. I would say 95 to 99 would be really cool because that's the Aaliyah, that's the Tupac, that's the Y2K era. I'd say that. I mean, I was alive then. It was good. It was good. I was not alive. I had Tamagotchis. You don't even know. I had to stay up until 3 a.m. making sure my egg was fed. <laughs> and you laugh now. Um, like you said, I think it is a little bit difficult to go to the past, but I think I, <laughs> I think I would definitely want to go to like the 70s or the 80s just for the music, hit up the disco. You never know. Yeah, I'm going with Riley. Yeah, I I kind of get it from the aesthetic <laughs> as well. Yeah. yeah, very 70s. I'm gonna say um, April of 1927. Can we get a fact check on that? I want to know what went down. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go and I'm going to visit my grandparents. Yeah. Two of my, three of my grandparents will have been born by then. Uh, first, I'm going I'm to stay in America, visit my maternal grandparents, check in on them, see how they're doing. Then I'm going to have to try to get to Eastern Europe, check in on my grandfather, and then I'm going to have to wait around until like th around 1935, January 1st, 1935. I'll have to wait, see my grandmother be born. I can't wait until you find out about the Great Depression well, on that one. Yeah. Well, you'll, you'll be there to catch it when, when she comes out. You'll oh, be like, yeah. yeah, right there with the camera, yeah. boom, <laughs> going in the photo album. And that's how you give your grandparents a heart attack <laughs> and mess with the timeline. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, Paper Girls is out on Prime Video. Make sure you watch Thank it. Thank you for having us. <laughs>